Hi guys, welcome to a brand new episode of History of a Haunting, and today we are meeting with another friend of ours who is an amazing author. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to sit down for a chat with Jason Roach. He is the author of the new book, The House on Dead Man's Curve. Now, it's actually dropped a couple of weeks early, but everybody, please say hello to our friend, Jason. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Hi, welcome to the show. Thanks, I'm glad to be here. Thank you so much. Um, so Laura and I are very, very glad to have you here and we're really excited to talk about your new book. Um, but we I have a couple of questions for you beforehand and awesome. the first one that <laughs> Laura's dog, uh, our listeners know Humphrey, it's fine. Um, <laughs> My first question is, um, I know that you are a paranormal investigator, and um, I wanted to know, how did you get involved with the paranormal? Well, I have always had some type of paranormal experience going on around me. Oh, okay. Which is why I wrote the book. Okay. But... Um, I really, uh, like, I was into, you know, all the TV shows. Sure, um, yeah. Uh, and then there was a group that uh, they had, like, an online presence. Um, and that's how I met uh, Alex Matsuo that you guys had on not too long ago. Yep. yep. And uh, we became friends. And then eventually, uh, like, two years ago, I think it was, um, she just called me up. She was like, hey, I'm going on an investigation. Do you want to go with me? It's like right down the street from you. And I was like, yeah, let's go. That's so, great. So we went and then um, uh, that was actually the Trevette Clinic. Oh, uh, that, OK. That her, that her book is about. And um, we did that. And then a couple months later, we did the U.S. Battleship. Of oh, North Carolina? North, yes, North Carolina Battleship. We and just did that in July. That place is trippy. It really is. Um, it really is. Yeah. Um, so we did that. And then on the way back, we just started talking because she had rode down. I, wrote, or I drove us down. And she, she was like, do you want to join the team? I was like, I would love to join the team. And so that's just kind of how it how that started. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Um Yes. So we just did the USS North Carolina back in July. Um, Excuse me. And, oh, no, that's okay. In fact, last weekend we just did. Um, so every time we do an investigation, Laura and I are on um, a paranormal investigative team together um, called Southern Entities Paranormal with Chris Allgood mm -hmm. and Audra Keeler. And um, so every time our team does an investigation, History of a Haunting does a recap show. So we just did that on the 10th. And then, um, unfortunately, Laura's unable to join us for the next one, but our last investigation of the year is of the Trivet Clinic in November. Awesome. Awesome. Yes. yes. Super it's excited. It's a great place. That's what I've heard. Great That's what place. I have heard. Yeah. I'm super, super excited. Um, if you need someone that. else to tag along, I'll, I'll go with you. Right? Yeah, Absolutely. I'm super bummed, especially after talking to Alex about it, that I'm not going to be able to make that one. Yeah. But I'm, no, it's, you know, it's, far it's away. Amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. Nice. But next time, for sure, I'll try to, we'll have to do it when I'm out there. Yeah. And you're going to be out here a lot since we're going to be doing the convention circuit. Um, okay. Laura, your turn. We're just going to pepper him with questions until he Go runs away it. screaming. Okay. Ah! So <laughs> you are on a team and you have done inv some investigations. Um, so how did that, do you think that those pushed you to become an author or were you like a writer before and it just kind of came into that or? So again, like, like the paranormal, I'm sorry. Uh, didn't mean to cut you off. Uh, no, you're great. <laughs> like, like the paranormal. Okay. So I've, I've always read, there are unfinished books from when I was in grade school laying around this house somewhere. Oh, wow. Um, 
Yeah, uh, those will never see the light of day. But um... <laughs> I bet that is hilarious because I have some of my old writing too, and I look at it and I'm like, oh no. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's uh, yeah, no, like, why did you write your whole life? I mean, really? No, nobody does that. Um, <laughs> but it was it was always one of those things that I started and then never finished, hmm. and again kudos to Alex because I, I, you know, we were friends and I see her and I, she's popping out all these books and God, I know I'm like, geez. And I'm like <laughs> yeah. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to do this because if she can do it, I can do it. And I started in November of last year. Okay. Um, took a little pause in December to get married and then picked it back up at the beginning of the year. And pushed out we had it done by june really yeah okay all right that's awesome that's yeah. Really great. So, yeah all right well talk to us about this new book the house right. on dead man's curve tell us all the things the house on dead man's curve i have a proof copy right it here. is gorgeous i love that cover yeah oh, really yes cool. the cover so the cover is done by um uh, a friend of mine her name is hannah bernhardt Okay, um, and we we kind of grew up together and then reconnected later on. And she is a fantastic artist. Really? Okay. I, yes, I love her to death. Um, but anyway, so the book is the book is based on as I say her and I look at it and it's just gorgeous. Um, it's based on paranormal experiences that I have encountered throughout my life. Okay. Um, and, and I, when I thought about it, I was like, well, they're, you know, they're really not that extravagant to write in a book. You know, people don't, people don't want to read, oh, I heard a door knock. Right. <laughs> you, 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 you know, so I was like, <laughs> how can I take these experiences and make them interesting? Right. And so I just built the story around it. And... I created this team of paranormal investigators, which is what I know. It's what I do. The main, the main character is pretty much me in a nutshell. Um, and I, I sent them to this haunted location, um, which is a house that sits on Dead Man's Curve. Okay. True fact. I lived, and most of the experiences I had was in a house on Dead Man's Curve. Oh, really? In our in uh, Statesville. Really? Yes. Um, I think so every somebody, state has oh, a Dead multiple. Man's Curve. Yeah, there's, I think there's multiple. <laughs> yeah. So, I've had people come up to me and be like, "Oh, Dead Man's Curve, it's over here." I'm like, "Nope, that's another one." Right. <laughs> There Not are <laughs> zillions of them. Yeah, there's a bunch of them. I love this. Okay. Right. I love that it's so, based on a real place, too. That's super cool. Yeah. It is. Um, obviously, I changed I changed a lot of stuff. Yeah, the, the house I was living in at the time was a rental. Um, so, obviously, I don't want people right. Um, right. going and banging on these people's doors like, hey, you got ghosts? You know, like, can I see them? Um, right. We read this book all about the stuff going on in your house. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So, um, and then um, there, there's a, a scene where the investigators visit a graveyard. Ooh. And it's, it's the graveyard that my family is buried in. Like my grandparents are there. Oh, okay. Um, so I, I did change the name of that location. Because I do not want people... Right. Because you know they're out there. You know they're out there. They're absolutely they're out there. You're like, talking to two of them. I mean, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we're just waiting for you to, like, mess up and say the real name. Then we're going to be... Then we're going to be like, Laura, get out here. We're going. We're going. Right. right. Yeah, you know, so... Um, <laughs> if you're smart enough and you find the area, you could probably figure it out. But... Um, 
Yeah. Don't go tramp on my grandparents. But okay, <laughs> you got it. You got respectful. Always respectful. Yeah. So um, let's see what else. Uh, so I wanted to incorporate some of Statesville's lore as well. Oh, cool. Okay. So as tensions start to rise in this uh, Airbnb that the uh, investigators are staying in. I freaking um, love this so much. <laughs> <laughs> Already I'm like, I gotta get this book. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds so cool. Oh my god. This is basically Carrie's dream weekend already. <laughs> <laughs> A thousand percent. Yeah, so as tensions rise, they decide to get out of the house and go see some of the sites. Okay. Um, so they visit a an old school house uh, from the 1800s. Love it. Um, that's it's it's actually still there. I'm surprised that it still exists. Um, really? They go to uh, Fort Dobbs. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of Fort Dobbs. It's in mm -hmm. Statesville in Iredell County. Um, oh, okay. It's a it's an old uh, French and Indian War fort. Oh wow! All right. And um, it used to just be. And this is the craziest thing, because when I was doing research on this place, because I haven't lived there in 10 years, um, it used to be just land. And it had it had like your little picket fence sure. around it, you know, like you see in the battlefields at Gettysburg and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and um, it was like a park. Like it had like picnic areas and playgrounds. And the office was like this little shack. Okay. And you go outside the shack and there's all there were like all these graves. Oh. Yeah. So there were all these and I remember this as a child. There were all these graves there. Uh and there was one marked unknown and it was supposed to be this unknown child. Oh. I could not find anything listed on these graves. But I know they're there. I sat on them. I played on them. Yeah. As as oh. I just said, don't trample on people's graves. I did that. <laughs> <laughs> but um, <laughs> but, but yeah, children don't crazy. know any better. It's fine. <laughs> it's it's crazy. I don't know if because they were doing they started remodeling. God, probably. I was still there when they started remodeling, and what they did is they reconstructed the original fort. Okay. From like old plans that they had found or something. Uh -huh. So I don't mm -hmm. know if if they moved them during that process. I would hope not. Yeah. But um so that's one of the places that they visit. And another they go to the ghost train. I'm sure you guys know about the ghost train of Statesville, right? I have heard about it, but not specifics. Like I have heard everybody's like the, don't don't go there but <laughs> i have heard yeah or do laura you're well, writing all this down right <laughs> <laughs> well honestly okay so this is the one place that i would say do not go um back in the, the late 1800s i think it was there was a passenger train it was running behind um, so it left the depot and it was traveling at a very high speed. And I think, I, yeah, I do a, know this story. There's a bridge. Uh, it's called the Boston Bridge. Mm -hmm. um, and it's very Hogwarts style, you know, like you just picture the Hogwarts Express going over it. But I love this it, guy it so was, much. It was, going, <laughs> it was going over the bridge and it's kind of angled. So when they turned, they were going too fast and it went over the embankment. Oh, okay. I was thinking of a different, <clears throat> of a different train accident. Okay. So um, it's said that um, most of the people on it survived, um, but th there were a lot of casual, uh, you know, injuries and things. Mm -hmm. uh, but the conductor was one of the people that died. And it said that you can see him, you know, walking around with his light his lantern around the wreckage. Um, people have have talked about him coming up to you 
and asking you what time it is and he'll pull out his pocket watch to kind of check it and then he just disappears um Ooh, that sounds very gettysburgy it is, <laughs> yeah, it is. But, but you know it's kind of around that time period too you know? yeah. yeah wow but, this um, is so fascinating i love it but, i know but it uh it's st the, the the reason I say don't go there is because it is still an active railroad. Railroad. Oh, and okay, fair. Back in back in two thousand nine, there was a group of investigators from Charlotte that oh, no. they they went to investigate, and they saw the light, the headlight from the train coming, and they thought it was the ghost train. And before they realized like it was too late when they realized oh my god this is a real train now real how do you train. don't know a real train god bless them but i mean i feel like it would be without right yeah trains are yeah quiet. yeah um unfortunately uh two people uh sustained really bad injuries uh one resulted in an unaliving uh okay yeah so uh don't go there don't don't visit it you can actually drive by there there is a road i'm trying to think of the name um i want to say it's it's connected to buffalo shoals road somehow but you can go down it um and you can actually see the bridge from the road beneath but, it yeah, well I, it's actually higher up oh okay so, yeah so down. you can see the bridge uh okay if you're driving down the road and you're looking to the right and you look up, like you can see it off in the distance. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Um, the best time to see it's in the in the fall and the winter. Oh, I bet. When the trees and, and stuff isn't like blocking yeah. it. Yeah, nice. Stuff. Um, so then another place that they visit is a place called the Vance Hotel. And basically a lot of the stuff I've heard about this place is just rumors. Sure. Um, uh, but supposedly, there's a little girl who lives in the basement, and people that have been sense. walking around downtown, and they will see her just peering out the windows. And the windows are weird, like, Whoa. so... <laughs> are so creepy! Right? Right? <laughs> oh, God. So, like, you're walking down the sidewalk, and you got, like, half a window, and the other half is underneath the sidewalk. Okay. So it's mm -hmm. like, she's peering out like this <laughs> that is so creepy but god oh. damn am i here for it <laughs> oh I'm my god so, i'm here for yeah it. you I just was... see like the very top half of her face i think i don't know if that makes it worse or better i right. feel but like it makes would... it worse i would love to experience it um As... it's not something i ever have but uh, wow oh my god yeah. it's uh so, what i'm sorry um, go ahead have you ha have you had a lot of experiences in your investigations, like personal experiences like that, like where you've seen apparitions or anything like that in your in your real life? In real life, um, mm -hmm. so in the house on Dead Man's Curve, um, I actually saw someone walk into my room, and mm -hmm. they they stood in the doorway for about five minutes, and I was laying in bed reading a book. I looked up just out of the corner of my eye with peripheral vision. Sure. I'm legally blind almost, so I don't have peripheral vision. So I, I saw someone. The fact that somebody I, was there was like, um, <laughs> yeah. uh oh. <laughs> I, I distinctly remember the clothes they were wearing. So um, I thought it was, it was my uh, partner at the time. And so I, 20 minutes later or whatever, I get up and I go, what did you want? Why did you come in my room? I didn't come in your room. I didn't want nothing. <laughs> and then I look down and I notice he's wearing completely different clothes. Oh my god! From what I saw, um, were they like time so, period type of clothes or? No, it was like a purple t-shirt and jeans. Whoa! Hmm. Yeah, purple t-shirt and jeans. And now I choose to believe. And this may not be true, uh, but this is my choice. Um, so my grandparents' farm was a mile and a half, about a mile away from this house that I was renting. 
Okay. And he passed away on that farm. And I choose to believe that that was him coming to check on me. Oh. Because at the time I was in a very tumultuous, whatever that word is, um, relationship. Relationship. Okay. Yeah. Like it was bad. Yeah. So I, I feel like that was him coming to check on me. Oh, I love that. But I don't think he would be the one to open all the windows in the house while we were gone. <laughs> don't love that. Yeah. yeah. So so that's an interesting uh, thing that happened as well because so we went to Walmart, you know, because everybody goes to Walmart in Statesville. It's the only thing to do. And... <laughs> Good to know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and... Uh, you have the ghost train at Walmart. <laughs> Make choices. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we come back, and every single window in this house is open. We call the landlord. We're like, hey, did you come over and open these windows? Like, what's going on? He's like, no, I haven't been there. I don't know what you talk about. So we closed them. Locked them. But a week later, we went back out again, come back out, come back home. They're all open again. <gasps> now, remember, they were locked. Right. Mm -hmm. So the first time, I would say that could be explainable. Mm -hmm. You know, elements, house shifting, heat rising, different humidity levels. Sure, whatever. yeah. When they're locked. Very, very, yeah. very difficult the, to explain the, that. Mm -hmm. Something had to turn that lock. Yeah. Um, so we nailed them shut. Note to self <laughs> and everyone out there, do not nail your windows shut in a rental house. But that's what we did. <laughs> <laughs> that is so crazy. Because, I mean, like... The locks on my windows, they're not loose. Mm. Like, they're tight. Like, you mm -hmm. almost have to... Like really use some force to no, unlock and a lot of them. times. Yeah, and a lot of times you have to like push down on the window to get the to little... get it to line up. Yeah. Yeah. That is wild. Holy shit. <laughs> that was something that my mom said happened at our, our old house. Um we lived in a historic house um outside Chicago. And we had like the windows were so old school that they were like on ropes. You know, so they were, mm -hmm. that had been like painted a million times. And so it was really hard to get them. It was hard to open and close them already. And my, we had one, like a little kind of den that had windows all around it. And my mom said that she would, all of a sudden they would all be open. <laughs> I mean, I don't remember I was a kid, but yeah, she said that that was something that happened in that house and in, in the house that we lived in, I grew up in too. I mean, um, I feel like if I were a ghost, shit. I would probably do the same thing just to, <laughs> just, just, just to like F with people. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like, I mean, it would be the perfect thing to do to my best friend's husband because he'd be like, we're letting out the cold air out. And, you know, I would love to freaking do that. It'd be great to do to any dad. Like any dad. Are we trying to air condition the whole world? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I'm not paying to air condition yeah. the backyard. Exactly. Yeah. You grow it up in a barn. Yeah. That's so crazy. <laughs> yeah. So um, on the on the battleship, um, I had uh, we had oh, it was me and Alex and another one of our future team members. Uh, we were in the sick bay. Ah. And, yes. And <laughs> we we were using a program called the Phasma Box. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of it. Yes, but ex please explain it for our listeners that maybe have not heard of that. Okay, so the Phasma Box, it's a com Windows-based computer program. Uh, they are very anti-Mac. I'm so sorry. Um, oh. <laughs> they are. It's sad. It is um, sad. Bummer. But anyway, so it uses a word bank. It's kind of like a spirit box. Okay. Um, and it just kind of plays. It's got... Um, it's got this echoey sound, so it makes it sound a little creepy. Sure. It's almost like the, um, what are they? The it's, ovulus? Not the ovulus, but like the portals and things like the, that uh, uh, Jack Osborne and them. Oh, on their yes. Okay. Yeah, so it kind of it sounds like that. 
but um we were we had it going and we were getting you know a lot lots of highs 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 um and then we just start <laughs> right hi uh we, we get started, it hello <laughs> like you're here come on um <laughs> Can, can, can we see you? Uh, but we right. were talking about the uh, the torpedo. Yes. And so let me get let me again say that this is a word bank machine. Okay. Out of this machine, all of a sudden, or computer speaker, we start hearing sirens like the emergency sirens that would go off on a ship when it was hit or there was an emergency. That's freaking nuts. And so, and it went, it went and it went and it went. And then you could almost hear like radio chatter, like where people were radioing for help and things like that. That is so nuts. It just stopped. Hmm. Like out of the blue. Dude, Jason, one of the people on one of the teams that went with us mm-hmm. heard say, yeah. sirens that night. That's, that's the same experience, yeah. That's amazing. The same experience. Holy shit, you remember that, Laura? <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, no, I was gonna say, and th- there was somebody else um that heard the be- the dings, the bells that the, the bells, yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. When an officer mm-hmm. was coming on some, deck. Yeah, crazy sounds that were that. Oh, and the different sonar. Different kinds, but yeah, that yeah. happened to the, that, that ship, yeah. Oh, my. The minute you said the sirens, they actually, because I had left, and this was after I had left, they heard them, and they actually thought that it was emergency personnel, like some one of our group had mm-hmm. gotten injured. They That's actually what we thought, too. thought that it was real like EMT or fire or they ran up to the deck and they were like, is everybody okay? Did you hear that? And they were like, what are you talking about? We didn't hear anything. No, no, no. We, we, che- we checked with our people because we were split up too. I uh, cannot wait to tell them. Nobody heard, <laughs> nobody else heard it but us. Mm. That's awesome. So, that's really yeah. cool. I love it when you get to compare notes of the same places and the, some of the same mm. stuff is happening to, you know, different groups, different times, different yeah. everything. Love it. Yeah, it's a it's a validation for each of our, mm. um, their you exactly. know, experiences, yeah, which is experiences, really cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. That is really cool. Your book sounds so amazing. And you guys, run out and get it. You said that... Um, so this episode, it today is October 1st. So your book actually did come out a couple of weeks ago. Is that correct? Yeah. So I got anxious and I decided to pull <laughs> Beyonce and drop it a couple weeks early. So I mean, it exactly sounds like something I would do, too. Just ask Laura. <laughs> just, yeah, I call her the vault because she can't keep a secret to save her life. <laughs> I can't. I, 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 I can't either. Yeah, Any no, kind of yes. good news? No, I want to tell everybody immediately. It's very difficult for me to keep yeah. my mouth shut. Yeah, she that's can. like my husband at Christmas. Uh, like <laughs> between the, so so we start buying Christmas gifts like in July. Mm-hmm. <laughs> by, Christ, by Christmas, we have nothing to open because we constantly keep giving them to each other. That is how it is in in our house. My son is always like. Can I just open one gift early? And then I'm like, well, and I look at my mom and she'll be like, no, absolutely not. And then my son and I are like, come on. (coughs) And then on Christmas, it's like, well, I had bought you all 20 gifts each, but you only have two left. So here you go. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Oh, God, you are so our, you're so our tribe. Absolutely. Yeah. Zane keeps me honest because he is young so i have to keep you know pace yourself uh, yeah yeah um or he'd whip through all of them in about five minutes but yeah she I'm says that. that way too i have a hard time like I, i'm really bad i give people stuff all the time early. all the time she I just she it. already gave me my christmas <laughs> present i really did <laughs> when we were part in because i didn't want to <laughs> ship it I was there. I was like, "Here, I already have it. There you go. (laughs) Merry Christmas." It's so cool, though. Like ninety-five. It's a freaking (laughs) yeah. Thanks for Christmas in August. 
It's a <laughs> hockey mask that is autographed by um, Ari Lehman that played the child Jason in the original Friday the 13th. Oh. I know, it's the freaking best. I love it so much. Um, I'm looking at it now. I'm like, oh, hi. <laughs> um, yeah, so she's already given me my Christmas present, so you are in very good company. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question for you. Would you consider your book horror or is it more like suspense or Ooh, good question? Yeah. Like just kind of in a paranormal vein or yeah. Like, so it's kind of a mixture of all great. Like, so it depends on what you consider horror. Um, <laughs> horror. There's there, you know, there are some people that get scared of every little thing. There are mm -hmm. some people that think paranormal is horror. Um, so if that's you, then yeah, it could be horror. Okay. Um, it's definitely a thriller. Yay. Because yeah. once it starts, once it starts going, it goes. Okay. Uh, um, I can't wait. <laughs> and it's obviously paranormal. Um, the way I like to describe it is... It's like Ghost Hunters meet Psycho. Whoa. <laughs> <at> a, yeah. <laughs> meet Psycho at a Da Vinci Code pace. Jeez, that took like 900 turns. <laughs> Just that one <laughs> sentence. I'm like, I love it. Go. Holy shit. Wait, what? I can't. This, you guys, we've got to get this book, everybody. All right. So, da, all right. Speaking of. Da Vinci Code. Have you guys read the Da Vinci Code? Yes. Yeah. All right. So, I was mentioning about my editor who lives in London mm -hmm. uh, before we got on. Yeah. My editor's name is Lynn Picknett. Her and her partner, Clive Prince. Not Clive Prince. What is his name? What is his name? I don't remember his name, but um, <laughs> anyway, Some she's, the, <laughs> she's, the, she's the important one. But um, she's the important one because uh, the two of them co-authored a book called The Templar Revelation. Oh, uh, okay. Back, back in the late 90s. Okay. It is Dan Brown's inspiration for the Da Vinci Code. Get the fuck out. Oh. Holy it's shit. Called, what is it called again? Templar? The Templar Revelation. Okay. The Templar Revelations. All right, Absolutely. I know. We're like, hang on. I we got to write this down. And Lisa, she writes all kinds of her, her and her writing partner. They between the two of them, they've got just about everything. And if you love things, honestly, that'll make you question religion, they're the people to go to. Really? Um, yes. Mm -hmm. um, I, I absolutely love them. And anyway, so I became friends with her on Facebook a couple years ago. And just, you know, little fan guy, you know. You know. Right. Oh my God, she's awesome. I love her. She sent me signed books. It's amazing. Um, <laughs> uh, well, I, I started, like I said, I started this project in November. And come February, she put out a post that said she was doing, you know, side editing as a gig. That's and I so cool. I reached out and we made it happen and she she is amazing uh she also used to be you know uh when she was uh i don't want to say when she was younger but part of her career before her writing career took off oh, okay she was the editor editor for the london times whoa so this oh, nice. this chick's she's not playing yeah she's a heavy <laughs> no no she is heavy um you can catch her now she's on unexplained mysteries I believe it is uh, the, they bring her in to talk about different things. She is that the is, one with William Shatner? The it's new the one? British, it's the British version. Oh my god, so oh, it's okay. so okay. much better then. I bet yes. it is. Oh my god, everything on the BBC is so much better. It's so yes. much better. I love, Ab, Ab Fab is like my favorite show of all time. Oh my god, yes. All British uh, shows. Ab, Ab Fab, uh, the Vicar of Dibley, um, have you been served? Right, have you been served? Uh, keeping up appearances. Mm -hmm. All of them. <laughs> I love it. Oh my god, I love the BBC. 
Me too. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. that's like one really nice thing about our trip to London. I'm like, I don't have to worry about like, you know, if I want to watch TV before I go to bed because I just put on like Graham Norton or whatever, you know. Like, I, love I, Graham, I, love I love Graham. Totally Graham I love Graham Norton. I love totally fine. Yeah. He is the funniest late night guy ever. Sorry, on a diatribe about how much we love England. I mean, yeah, I mean, really. <laughs> oh, I could but, go on for days and I've never been there. So, right. oh, God. I mean, she's already like, so she's never been to London, like, I've much past through. But past not through. Like yet. Not, yeah, and I've, I've never been to it. Paris, but she has. So I'm like, okay, we got to go here in London and here and here and here. And she's like, okay, well, in Paris, we got to go here and here and here and here. Um, but everything about the <laughs> British monarchy and the French monarchy, I have studied, and I'm like, yes, I'm not, le I'm not going to France without seeing Versailles, and also I'm going to tell you literally everything you do not want to know about every freaking monarch that's lived in Buckingham Palace since it was a little hut on a river. Okay, so exactly. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, great. <laughs> that, that, that's what. For our, our honeymoon, you know, we had to set boundaries because because I was like that. And I was like, we're going here, we're going here, we're going here, we're going here. Oh, my God, did you know Downton Abbey's here? We're going here, we're going here, we're going here. And he was like, whoa. Yeah. So, so I get to plan London. He gets to plan uh, Dublin. And then we get to split Edinburgh. Edinburgh. So, so for sure you have to do Mary King's clothes in Edinburgh. Um we've covered uh Edinburgh Castle is also um what did we cover? We covered this was before Laura was on the show. I used to have another co-host, Archie, who left last year. So we covered it was Haunted Scotland, it was Edinburgh Castle, Mary King's clothes, and um uh, I can't remember the third one. Anyway, yeah, there's a missing know. doll. There's a like there's a child that haunts it. And people leave this child dolls. And this little girl ghost's favorite doll was stolen. And ever since there's been this like if you Google search little girl ghost stolen doll Edinburgh, you'll find it. Um now there's like this <laughs> I mean, unless you're a paranormal podcaster and you need to know, <laughs> then you'll search it. I'm all, anytime there's creepy dolls, I'm like, I'm out. <laughs> I don't want to hear about it. it the doll, it's, it's not no, the doll itself right. that's creepy, but now there's this like search. They've like put out this thing saying, if you find this doll, please return it to the little girl ghost. I can't remember her name. Annie? Oh, I can't remember. Kind of yeah, they're just looking for this doll back because this little girl ghost loves okay. it. And yeah, so those are the three places that you guys need to go while you're in Edinburgh because so isn't Edinburgh Castle isn't that the same place as Hollywood Hollywood Castle? No, or palace? they're two. They're two different ones. Okay, I believe so. The Palace of uh, but they're connected, so, aren't they? Aren't they? Connected? Uh, you know what? I'm not sure. Hollywood House um, is, I believe, what the Queen herself owned. Um, and then Edinburgh Castle, the people of Scotland, I believe, own that. Okay. So, um, but I think Holyrood House, the Queen owns herself. Like, so she owns Balmoral. Balmoral. Yeah, she owns Balmoral. She owns, I think she owns Holyrood House. I think she owns Sandringham. Sandringham, yep. Mm -hmm. But everything else belonged to the, either the Scottish or the British people. So Buckingham Palace, Kensington Palace, all of those belong to Britain. Okay. But there are some that I get, she I herself get them confused. owns. Yeah, they're two different. They're definitely two different <laughs> buildings. There's so much stuff over there that, you know, right. I mean, like oh, it's it, it is really confusing. Um yeah. And you can't you can't see it all in a I week. Have carry, but... Oh no. Yeah. No, yeah, there's no really way. You have to do your research ahead of time to see like mm -hmm. what you want to see. And like we were kind of saying earlier, a lot of the palaces and those kind of places are only open. So like certain times of the year, mm -hmm. or, yeah. you know, what have you. So if you really want to see something, you got to kind of almost plan your trip around it. 
around that, um, like the Diana thing, you know. Exactly. I can guarantee you we're going between July and August, and that's going to be the time we go. <laughs> yeah, for sure. You know what you absolutely must see? And I don't know if you've been to Harry Potter World at Universal Studios. But Too many times. I need to go back. <laughs> you have to go on the London Studios tour in Leaves. Yes. yes. Because it. I've never been to the Harry Potter and Universal Studios, but I promise you, I promise you, this blows doors on that. Oh, I'm sure. I'm it's sure. like a four to five hour self-guided tour mm -hmm. through the whole thing. And it's so huge. It takes that long. Um yeah. And then, you know, if you want to, like, just really stop and soak it in. And, I mean, my son and I took over 700 pictures there. Oh, oh, that would be me. I'm like, yeah, my phone's going to die but from all the pictures. A thousand percent. A thousand percent. It's really worth it. You absolutely should. The the butterbeer at the end that you get at the end, not great. Um, so... If you just want a picture drinking the butterbeer, go ahead and do that. But otherwise, it's basically <laughs> flat cream soda with the most amazing foam you've ever tasted. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So now that we have talked about all the things that he needs to do <laughs> while they're in <laughs> England. Um, so. Oh. Is it your, is it your turn? No, no, no. Go no. ahead. Um, well, now you make me forget. Go ahead, say it. Maybe I don't it'll. Think it's my fault. <laughs> Maybe it'll come to me. All right. Um, oh yeah. So uh, where are you gonna be like promoting your book? Um, besides, you know, on your fabulous tour. <laughs> <laughs> my fabulous <laughs> tour. Uh, my fabulous podcast tour. All right. So I've got you guys, which you guys are airing on October first. Yes. Um, right. I've, got, I've got another uh, podcast podcast radio show for iheart radio cool I, I don't actually know the name i keep asking him what's the name what's the name he won't tell me but um <laughs> weird anyways. all right <laughs> well it's a secret podcast. it's a secret po <laughs> <laughs> he gets these finds out he really doesn't want to be on this podcast whatever it is <laughs> it, it's my sister-in-law's boyfriend so i'm sure oh, he'll get back okay. to me eventually okay um, okay <laughs> but then we have uh Let's see. I have to make a list because I keep forgetting. Um, we have. Uh, He's like my spirit radio. animal. <laughs> <laughs> He's like my spirit animal. I swear to God. <laughs> Everything he says, I'm like, me too. <laughs> <laughs> so we have the spooky stuff radio with Alex wow. Muxio. That's going to be on 920. Right. Cool. Um, That's awesome. I'm doing a book launch party, which you guys are invited to. Um, I think I sent you the invitation. Um, you did, are you, yes. Are you local? Um, You're local, right? I am, but Laura's in Arizona. Girl, get out of the heat. That's what um, I keep telling her. I'm like, <laughs> come this way. I um, yeah, I'm over it, but yeah, my family's here, so. Um, yeah. I told her, bring I bring your family. It's fine. Families are welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe i mean i can't take it much longer it's like 97 today still i'm like fuck this shit oh it was a <laughs> nice 70 like five today uh -huh. gorgeous. yeah um, of course that's the one day of fall we'll get you know but right um, i mean kind of <laughs> yes actually for your book launch i did get the invite but we're we're in london that week we're gone the first through the 10th that's right yeah yeah, yeah. um it was on the 8th Hmm? It's on the eighth. We we're not back till the to the tenth. Ah, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So I forget. Which bumps you. me out. Uh, I know. I'm missing yours. I'm missing Alex's. Like yeah, I'm. The funny uh... thing is, we totally did not mean for this to happen. Oh really? The only day I had available and the only day she had available to like make things work. Oh okay. So we actually they actually ended up getting planned on the same day. So Alex's location. Um, for the Trevet Clinic. The Trevet Clinic is 20 minutes from where I lived on, the, on Dead Man's Curve. Oh, cool. Okay. Oh, cool. Yeah. And so in between, in between uh, the place that I lived and if you're taking backwards to the Trevet Clinic, there's a place called Allison's Woods um, that's also very haunted-like. Ooh, um, I love it. 
Yeah, it, it's had some interesting uh, lore go around with it, too. But, uh, like, witches in, in the woods and... Ooh. Which I don't know. States feels weird. I don't know what they consider witches. But, um... <laughs> <laughs> it just depends. She had thought. <laughs> right? <laughs> it, it could have been a cow, you know? It's a lot of farmland. But, um... <laughs> But yeah, so like that whole like stretch right there, yeah, um, has always had some kind of paranormal activity, um, which That's is really so interesting. That's so crazy. That is uh, interesting. But yeah, so we're doing that. We're doing the book launch at the uh, Statesville Civic Center uh, from three to seven p.m. on October eighth. Um, I highly recommend uh, get your book from Amazon, bring it with you, and get it signed. Talk spooky stuff with me. Well, let's not say spooky stuff. Cause right, because that's Alex's whole thing. Uh, she just commandeered that phrase. <laughs> she did. Thanks, she did, Alex. I, I didn't mean to do that. but uh, So we'll talk Statesville ghost lore. Cool. And, um, let's see. I am working on a Halloween investigation. Um, it's going to be on uh, 1027, I think, is the date that we planned. It's the Friday before Halloween. Oh, okay. Um, and I'm, I'm going to be doing a, it's going to be a live TikTok with Rebecca the Ghost Guide. Oh, I don't know okay. If you guys have heard of her, but mm -mm. Uh, she is fantastic. Um, I got to investigate with her um, in Gettysburg, and oh, uh, we, had a good, we had a good time. And yeah. so we're, we're trying to make that work out. Um, once I get that finalized, we'll definitely, you know, get it up on the website and stuff. So, yeah, that's for really sure. Let cool. Us know, and mm -hmm. we'll um, we'll throw it up for our listeners too, so they can catch you. That sounds like a lot of fun. I know, awesome. right? Great, so cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let us know. We're happy to do that. Um, God, you busy book promotion sounds so tiring. I'm like, Laura and I are in the middle of like writing our book, and Yuki and I'm going. Wow, Laura, that's a lot of work. <laughs> I'm exhausted. <laughs> so what, can, what conventions are you going to be at to promote your book? Uh, I don't know what's don't, left this year. Not a lot. I don't think, there's anything, sure. there's not, I don't think there's anything left this year. I'm excited. Um, I've applied again for Con Carolinas. We're going to be there too. Awesome. Yay. So ho ho hopefully we'll get pushed through. And yes. Um, I'm, I'm still trying to research, you know, what's out there. What, what are the best cons to go to, um, you know, for writing and paranormal. Um, so I'm kind of, I'm kind of following Alex's lead on that. A that's bit, cool. Oh, I that's cool. She's, yeah. She's, she's, yeah. she's got all the places down. So, um, that's cool. I, I, I would like to do, I would like to do Raven con. Um, I would love to go back to GalaxyCon. Um, we we did our presentations there, and that was so much fun. I saw your post um, that you had the best time. Yeah, it was great. We we really did, and everybody was so receptive, and they shared their we we shared our stories. They shared their stories, so it it was really cool. That's amazing. That's so wonderful. So Laura and I. Um, Savannah Paracon is coming back next year. Okay. So they haven't announced dates yet, but Laura and I were wanting to get in with that one. Oh, and okay. then we have booked Mansfield Paracycon at the Ohio State Reformatory. Ooh. Yeah, that's going to be a lot of fun. That's well, May 20. Okay. I mean, well, yeah. That's May 1920. May. Hang on, let me take a quick look here. Um, that's next May. <laughs> uh, <laughs> don't go backwards. Please don't go backwards. <laughs> it, right, it right. was four months ago. Um, and <laughs> no, it's uh, 19, it's um, 20, 20th and 21st. Yeah, because setup is, we just got the email for like all the particular setup is Friday night. And then it the convention is the 20th and 21st. And everything is set up in the cell blocks. Ooh, that's nice. A thousand percent. Yeah, check out their Facebook page because they have pictures from this year's um, Paris Icon and mm -hmm. the vendor booths. I mean, just looking. It's so cool. It is so cool. So we're doing that one. We're doing um, Gettysburg. It's going to be in July next year. 
Yeah. Um, so we're going to do Gettysburg. Um, we're doing Con Carolinas, Carolina Con. We're doing that. Laura's actually going to have to be here for like two weeks because it doesn't make <laughs> sense for her to fly here, do a con, come back, and then just come back a few days later. Um, yeah. Right. So she's going to be here for a while. I'm just moving in with her, I think, for like a month. I mean, <laughs> I, and that. what better way to plan our Harry Potter wedding, Laura? I mean, I mean come on. Though, like... <laughs> I told you I was never getting married again, but you might have made me change my mind. I'm telling you, we need to look at. <laughs> I've been trying to swear off women, but I'm like, mm, I don't know. Do I, I mean, like, nobody offered do I me get a wand. Uh huh. Nobody <laughs> offered me a Harry Potter wedding, Maybe. so. <laughs> um, just get me some butter beer. Right. We were just friends. They were dating, and beer. now we're getting married. Um, right. Yeah. <laughs> but things are progressing. They are. Things are <laughs> happening. Um. And then what else are we doing? Oh, and that takes us through August, July, August. There, I don't think there's anything. And then VultureCon in Wickenburg, Arizona in October. Oh, cool. Yeah, I yeah. come out here, y'all. Listen, I go back there all the time. She does. She's like, can <laughs> we do here. shit out here, please? <laughs> like once. Um, actually, that one's at an old um, mining town just outside of phoenix oh which yeah is super that's cool. cool yeah, yeah. and there's a lot of actually really cool like old west places to see out here that are not that are easy drives so that's really cool from phoenix yeah so yeah, um sam not- baltrusis is going to be at this year's laura wanted to go but then we're we're going to europe the same week so sam baltrusis is going to be there i think some of the guys from tennessee wraith chasers is going to be there so um they're really building that one up that one's that one's going to be really good um, but yeah, just some ideas for you for next year. Um, cool. Definitely. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. I do want to ask you, right? <laughs> I know, right. <laughs> I do want to ask you, what is your most important piece of advice for brand new paranormal investigators? Orbs are not real. They are dust. <laughs> or a bug. <laughs> or a or sneeze. Bug. It could be at one point, one awkward incident, it was a sneeze. Um, so <laughs> my, That's hilarious. my own sneeze, actually. Um, anyway, um, yeah, there it could be really could be anything. Um, okay. All right. Good. It's very, especially when you're, when you're learning to be a brand new paranormal investigator, it's Mm -hmm. not just going and doing the investigation. It's not just learning how to set up the equipment and learning the questions to ask and learning how to use the equipment that you've set up and, and how to approach a location. It's not just that. It's also learning how to review and decipher Mm -hmm credible evidence so that's a very very good point that and there are some things like mists and stuff like that that are very different from orbs but um Mm -hmm. yeah I, i i do agree with you i do agree with you if there is a particular looking orb or something that's been captured that doesn't move like dust or a bug then right. I will send that to the folks that trained me and I'll be like, Hey, you know what? This doesn't look orby, mm-hmm. but may, I mean, could you kind of, it's always good to like, we were talking the other night on um, the live Laura, where a lot a, any piece of evidence that you think you've captured that's worth any kind of damn is always peer reviewed. Right. Like you are, I'm constantly sending my stuff to various paranormal investigators being like, do you see this? Do you not? Do you like, what do you think this could be? Um, So if you, because I think sometimes we get so set in our mind, like we're seeing something one way Yeah, that you have to have a second set of eyes who didn't capture it. Maybe wasn't there, Mm. you know, and, and really isn't locked into a vision of, you know, you're seeing something one way because I think it's really easy to get focused on that. And there could be, you know, maybe another reason for that light anomaly or whatever it is, right? Mm -hmm. Shadow something. And so, or, you know, 
noise, whatever it is. So yeah, you have to have somebody who I think is apart from it, you know, like a third party almost, even yeah. if they were there, but you know right. what I mean? Mm-hmm. So somebody with some separation, um, take a look at it. Cause I think that really provides the validation, like, Hey, I can't explain this either. Right. So then, right. you, can, yeah. then you know, it's yeah. a little bit more. Yeah, valid. for sure. Right. Yeah. So guys, if you do capture video or um, a picture where you think you have an orb in it, absolutely send it to somebody that you know is a, an investigator that's been doing it for a little bit of time, has a little bit more experience reviewing evidence and seeing what's an orb and what's not. Because, I mean, now, Jason, that's not to say that we don't believe orbs it can happen. Exactly, exactly. But not everything. But not I, everything. Yeah, I would yeah. hazard a guess as to say maybe 3 to 5% will be a genuine orb <laughs> but that's it not much <laughs> they're very difficult <laughs> yeah yeah so um good i love it you know i ask whenever i'm on like watching podcast shows entity voices paranormal evidences is, is a big one that i watch um pretty much every week unless we're recording on monday nights but um And other podcasts that are also like on YouTube, they do lives, that kind of thing. I always like to ask their guests that question. What is your most important piece of advice for for a brand new paranormal investigator? Because I was one at the time, you know, Mm -hmm. and I wanted to, I always had so much admiration for folks that had been doing it for a a while, be it two years longer than me or four years or 30 years. So I always like to ask that question of um, the more seasoned paranormal investigators, because I have yet to get the same answer twice. And my streak is still going. I have yet. (laughs) So I just have this like whole pile of really great advice and none of it's the same, which I think is really cool. I think that's really cool. I think it's great. And plus, we're sharing knowledge from people who have had all kinds of different experiences, have all kinds of different levels of experience in the paranormal. And I think it's so good because a lot of people want to get into it, but they're like, they have no idea how they don't know where to start. And yeah, just it's good throwing out the information sharing with people who want to who want to start getting into it. So because it's a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun. It is a lot. of Yeah, it is a lot of fun. Um, why don't you go ahead and hit him with the last question? All right. So, oh, what, Lord. Do I, I, why am I scared of this? <laughs> no, no, no. You don't have to be afraid. Well, actually, I have two. But one has nothing to do with paranormal. So we'll do the paranormal first. So uh, <laughs> what is the scariest location that you have investigated, would you say? Scariest or most active, however you kind of want to, like, take that. I would say the scariest was the cabin at 360. Oh, what is that? Uh, it's a little place in Martinsville, Virginia. I oh, good old Virginia. Is. Good old Virginia. <laughs> so it, it, and it's, it used to be, it was, it's a log cabin, but it was actually like a model home place. You know, oh, okay. Now. And um, they, it sits on an old battlefield. Ooh. And then the house next to it, uh, there was uh, someone in the house that was unalived. And okay. so between the two, it's just really like I was, I was uneasy. Um, and at the time, uh, uh, Alex wasn't going to be able to make it down. And it was just me and our, one of our other team leaders or team members at the time. And we, like we both were kind of like, okay, this doesn't because, feel right. Yeah, this doesn't feel right. So we actually limited the time we were in a building. Really. And then, which I mean, in a way, it, it sucks for the you want to get the evidence and you want to investigate. Yeah. And and you want to find things to either debunk or, or prove whatever's going on from the scientific standpoint. Right. But then you've got to you've got to think about yourself as well, mm-hmm. um, and the safety of the people around you. Wow! So so it was like like we were thirty minutes, and we were out. We would move to a different location, and then we would come back, and like we would just rotate. Yeah. But we would not stay in a certain area for longer a long than time. Really? Wow. Yeah. 
That's really interesting. That's interesting. Um, but you're right. You're absolutely right. Like, whether, I mean, not everyone's a psychic medium. Not everybody, you know, is, is empathic or has the gift or whatever you want to call it. But we all have that innate sixth mm. sense when we know something is not right it's the feeling yeah. you get when you meet somebody and you just don't want any to be around them it's the feeling when you can sense somebody watching you it's that mm. and we all have that so if you feel that way in a location by all means <laughs> go to yeah. a different area i mean and maybe right. maybe that's just a particular spirit making you feel that way and like did you find that it felt better when you went back or it still felt the hella creeps and you didn't like it it's it built so oh, like the yeah. minute you the, the minute you walked out of the house you immediately felt completely different okay and then the media when you walked back in and, and this is my personal experience sure. i can't speak for you know the other team member Sure. Or um, Alex when she was finally able to make it, but you know my personal experience was I walked out of that house, I felt like a different person, like I felt like myself again. When I went into that house and I was there for a long period <clears> of time, <throat> it kind of like it it built. Wow, like it was, like, and uh, it's it's hard to describe. Sure. But, but wow, it, like the tension built, kind of. Would you ever go back there again? Oh, yeah. Really? Okay. Yeah, I would because, uh, one, you're not going to scare me off. Two, um, you know, I'm intrigued now, you know. It's challenge kind of. (laughs) Yeah, like what's going on? Obviously, I'm not going to be like, you know zach bagans or whatever and go out there and, and, and accept that challenge but right. <laughs> <laughs> bad bitch what <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> exactly but, uh, bring it <laughs> bring it and then ah <laughs> i haven't brought it ah! <laughs> yeah but but there, there's still things to to figure out we, yeah we're getting, we Love weren't really that. able to figure out a whole lot. The bad, the bad thing is, is that we had to throw out all of our audio because it sits on a very, like, it's literally thirty feet from a busy highway. Oh damn, that sucks! And, and the whole time there's cars going yeah. by, and oh god. That really sucks. It reminds me of um, I did an investigation of the Yuma Territorial Prison. And it's literally right, like they built Interstate 8 right next to it. And of yeah. course, like one of the main cells that's outside that they actually used to use as a punishment is outside. So the train kept blasting by and then cars on the free. So it was any, any kind of EVPs you might capture outside are dodgy at best simply because mm-hmm. you know there's wind and birds and all kinds of stuff it they can be right. caught but it's scary exactly yeah but yeah on a highway uh uh-uh, that sucks especially yeah. a location as, as active as this one seems to be active yeah yeah right <laughs> wow scariest place huh hmm interesting I, I know i'm like different places that um that i we're not familiar with, and and I'm sure yeah, uh, most of I do love that too. Either because um, some some places a little more local. I love. It's always um, refreshing to find out about new places because it seems like once something kind of breaks open, it like just blows up, and then you know, yeah, there's not a you don't hear yeah. about some of the smaller places that probably have the best the stuff best stuff, right? <laughs> right. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I absolutely agree. Wow. God, this was such a fun conversation, Jason. Thank you so much for being on the show. Do you have any questions for us, given we are your first podcast? (laughs) Yes, thank you for breaking my podcast, Cherry. Um, Hey, we're here for you. I mean, (laughs) send your friends. We'll do it to everybody. (laughs) It was great. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Yay! Um, (laughs) I will say this. All right, so a lot of people talk about 
you know, sound. Someone asked me if I was going to do a soundtrack to my book. Ah. Uh, so uh, it's not something I'm going to do, but I will tell you the one song that I listened to 98% of the time I wrote. Um, and that it, it's a Tori Amos song called Digital Ghost. Oh. And it, it literally, like, I'd put it on and I was writing. Really? That's interesting. Yeah, it, yeah, it, it, it was amazing. So um, I would definitely suggest giving it a listen. Okay. It's, um, it did find itself, uh, it, it found a way to make its way into the book uh, without getting sued and going to jail and all that. So. <laughs> we love you, Tori! <laughs> okay. I do. I love Tori Amos, as you can see. I, I, I love Tori Amos. She's oh, girl. yeah. Um, nice. And she's mentioned in the book quite a bit, you know, because the, the dude is me. But, um, but yeah, so you give that song a listen. It's it's definitely an interesting thing, and, and it it kind of has when you, when you really listen to the lyrics, it talks about uh, you know, take a closer look at what's haunting you. Yeah, and and like that that's like one of the main lines, and I'm like, hmm, you know, that's that's pretty. That's a good question. That's a good that, exercise. Like, take a closer yeah. look at what's haunting you. That's a really good. I mean, you is, could, it, is it internal? Is it external? Is it is literally, literally it somebody in a is purple it? shirt and jeans standing in your doorway? You don't know. <laughs> like, what? It could be anything. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So yeah, um, I love was, it. That was my inspiration. That's wonderful. Aside from all the others. I mean, yeah. Laura, you and I need to yeah. find a song like this so that we can get to the writing. <laughs> yeah, the problem is I'm like a squirrel. I'm like, oh, I'll put this album on. And then I'm like, oh, what about this song? <laughs> it's just something else that pulls my attention away from the writing. Right. <laughs> yeah. Same but thing. Yeah, Same thing. Nerd. Oh, and I have to Oh, ask she you. does. She does have to ask you. So, She's been. I did Facebook stalk you a little bit before you came on. Um, research guest really research are friends that maybe have met in real life i'm not sure but um who 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 oh you and carrie uh, we, are you guys facebook friends we are facebook friends i think we met at con carolina mm -hmm. we were introduced at, quickly yeah oh, okay, yeah okay. At andrea's table so yeah. yeah oh okay cool um well so back to your stalking go ahead you. so yes i was stalking you mm -hmm. and then um did you meet Cher? yes I'm so jealous. I love she, that. yeah. <laughs> I was like, is she as fabulous as I think she is? She is super sweet, super nice. That's all super I've ever heard. tiny. Mm. Like, like you see her on stage, and you know she looks like she's kind of. I would say like full figured, but you know she's got the hips, and she's mm. got you know her her little clothes are so tight fitting girl we get backstage and she is like a freaking twig like i was scared to touch her i was like don't break little I chair don't, doll you know? i don't want to break you <laughs> and then nice. uh, uh sean he he was like he's the big share fan like like mm -hmm. share it shares his thing and so we're going to like do our, our picture or whatever and shares all like on me and I'm like but he's back here like like 10 feet away oh. like, hey. why didn't you get in here <laughs> she, tur right. she turns around and she's like well come on we're gonna take the picture <laughs> and so she had to like coax him to come up and stand in the picture was he oh, super no. nervous he was super nervous. Oh my god! But it was so worth it. How tall so is she? Is she look is she short? Like how tall is she? Um, I would say sure. she's probably around five, ten, five eleven, mm -hmm. roughly. Dude, she wasn't much taller she's than taller me. than me. Okay, wow. And like she's uh, tall. I do know that she's tall, but yeah, she's wee. 
I do love Cher, but the minute Laura saw that you, she's like, look, I'm happy to talk about this book, but really the info I need is on Cher. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wow. I right. to know if she's, yeah, you know, no, we... there are not a lot of people that get the chance to meet her, but it, from the people that I, I know. Well, that yeah, it's also, Cher. She's so nice and wonderful. It's just, fuck, it's fucking Cher, dude. It is. Yeah, but I've only just heard wonderful things, so I just had to ask. Oh, oh yeah, really? yeah. We've had I'm we've uh, we mix. met her. <laughs> <laughs> we've uh, we've met Paula Cole. We've actually hung out with Paula Cole. Do you guys remember Paula? Mm -hmm. Cole? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so she's she's believe it or not, she's still touring. She's still out there putting music out. It, it's nice. Great That's music. wonderful. Um, I do like. But yes, yeah, so we like hung out with her after a show one night. Uh, just wow chilling. it was pretty cool nice. um oh my god we've met tori um did you get nervous yes. and stand 10 feet away <laughs> Girl, let me tell you what my dumb ass did oh sorry um no no please okay, we curse all the time <laughs> all the time yeah we've been all explicit right. content since day one <laughs> so um so there technically wasn't supposed to be a meet and greet this day. She does meet and greets normally at her concerts, uh, you know, a couple hours before the show. People line up and she'll come out and meet them or whatever. Well, there wasn't supposed to be one, but we decided, hey, she's got to get off the bus. So we're going. So we're si we've been sitting out there all day. And, and she gets, she does pull up, her bus pulls up and she gets off the bus and she immediately she comes over and she walks over to us. And there's probably about 20 of us out there um that had all gathered and i had my one of the rare vinyls that i was going to ask her to sign oh, and everything. God. she walked up and she was like hi and i'm like hi can, can, can you play this song and she was like i'll try do you want to take a picture and i'm like yeah <laughs> 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 totally forgot I mean, about the record. Smooth. Everything. Like it just, it just wiped my mind completely. But, uh, but yeah, she now she's tiny. Ish, I bet she looks like she, she's yeah, yeah can fit in your the pocket inside the pocket. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I met Cheryl Crow one time and she, I always thought she was tall. She's not, she's like five, two and. Oh shit. Know, really? Oh round. wow. Yeah. The way that they shoot her, they make her look they like, make, you know, she looks like, five, like eight or something. I was kind of shares that, height. Yeah. Yeah. She was lanky. She's not, she's, she's mm. anybody five, one, five, two. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, this, this big, They're just tiny. The only person I nice. have ever a really sweet lady. So nice. Really? The only person that I have ever gone stupid, gaga, lost my voice and all the words I knew since <laughs> day one was Nikki Six from Motley Crue. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> he, uh, so I used to work. I, I'm from Arizona. So um, that's how Lori and I have been friends. Um, and I just moved to North Carolina a year and a half ago. But when I was living in Arizona, I worked at one of the airport hotels and Motley mm -hmm. Crue was staying there. And I was getting on the elevator as Nikki Six was coming off the elevator. I worked in sales. And um, he asked me where the restaurant was. And I was like, huh. <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> kind of like grunted <laughs> at him. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I, I. So he was like, just down. I'm like, I'll, I'll, I'll show you. Uh, some, and then it, it, I was 20 years old. And I loved him as much as I did when I was 12. And he <laughs> looked just the fucking same too, by the way. Um, That's great. Right? That cover girl eyeliner that you, that you light with a lighter so it goes on darker. That was, that was him. Nice. Yeah. I was That's so, awesome. yeah. I was just like, oh my God, I'm going to freak out. And then probably be a little. <laughs> <laughs> worth It would have been worth it though. Totally worth it. For sure. Totally worth it. Yeah. He would have been impressed. I mean, he would have. I'd, I'd be his wife today. I know it. I know it. But but I'm sorry. I had to leave him for Jason Momoa. So. Um, <laughs> A thousand percent. Okay. Anyway, awkward ending to an amazing show. <laughs> yeah. Sorry that we got on our tangent. I did. I just had to ask about sure. Yes. Yes. No, that was totally fine. 
totally fine. Yay. Well, so now, um, Jason, you are on social media. Where can um, folks find you if they want to follow you, stalk you? I mean, you know, whatever, you know, is blowing up their skirt. Where can they find you? So so it's Jason. It's uh, Jason Broach, author on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Um, cool. However, my TikTok is currently um, overrun with the queen. But um, that, uh, I don't remember what the Twitter is. I just set it up. It's like J, J Roach A or something like that. Okay. Um, but no, it's out there. Um, okay. You can You'll go to my it. website. It's there. You can find it. <laughs> it's a picture of him uh, and Cher. So you can go to my <laughs> website. It, it has the links to uh, all of my social medias and... It is uh, jasonroachauthor.com, I think. Uh, we're, we're in the process <laughs> of setting it up. So, you know, because I wasn't, you know, like a nobody before now, but uh, I'm still a nobody. But um, hang in there. This book sounds really amazing. So just buckle up right. because this is when the weirdos come out. Right. Let me test this real quick and we'll see. So I can give you the correct. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So this is the right one. We don't want anybody stalking the wrong person. We want right? to make sure that we lead them directly to you. Right. Because you deserve it. Ah, you deserve okay. the so weirdos. It, <laughs> no. Okay. Y'all, there is another author named Jason Roach. There is. He's like a psychologist or something. Yes, yeah. like, and it's very like religious based, and I was like, "No, no, don't stop that guy! <laughs> don't that's stop that guy. guy, guys! Don't do that!" <laughs> no. Yeah, so it's author Jason Roach dot com. Cool, and it has uh, oh, how do I get back to y'all? Where'd y'all go? Um, it has um, seriously all, all spirit links. animal. <laughs> <laughs> Swear to God, we're like twins. <laughs> All the links to the social medias are on there. Um, cool. There is a uh, email subscription thing, but please don't use it because it's currently not working. Okay. Um, we're trying. We're trying to. Uh, we just started this uh, last week, so uh, it is a project in the works. Yes. But uh, we're getting it. <laughs> cool. Okay. Just Yay! Up and super, yeah. super well, excited. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Laura, why don't you let everybody know where they can follow us? They already know, but let's tell them again because I like rep repetition. <laughs> you sure do. All right, you can follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at H O A H Podcast, and on the TikTok at H O A H Podcast at H O A H Carrie and at H O A H Co Host Laura. But Laura doesn't do anything on the TikTok, so just follow me. Um, yeah, I'm still trying to him. find my niche and TikTok. You know, it's, it's, I don't love it's a special world social media. The, the and then also, I don't want to stare at my own mug, like you know, and like post videos of myself. I think it's I'm like self conscious or something. You know, I don't, like it. It kind of weirds me out. I don't know. Like, it's hard for me. Like, it took me a long time with the podcast just to listen to the sound of my own voice without. <laughs> Cringing, so that's hardcore. me. That's me. Like, so yeah. I got over that, and um, then she's like, "Let's do YouTube." I'm like, "Seriously?" Um, <laughs> so that's fine because I can not. I don't have to look at myself when we do it. You know, I can focus on other people. Um, and Carrie's like, "Look at me!" <laughs> so she's super <laughs> into it, um, which is great for me because I can just kind of hide in the background. But because uh, yeah. Carrie the, will take over. Is, yeah, the TikTok is it's a it's a challenge for me, but I'll, yeah, she's always yelling at me. I'm trying to work on it. I mean, she's gonna have a lot of content in about three weeks. I promise. This is true. <laughs> so many pictures of myself. Well, and you know the other thing too is that with the the par the Paracon or the Con down in Charlotte next year, Laura. We have to commit to four hours of programming, so four panels or doing live like. You're really going to be tested then. Yeah. Yeah. No, but the panels are fun. The panels are fun. <laughs> the panels are fun. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm better on a, like, as long as I don't have to give, like, a presentation by myself. I mean, I've had to do that kind of stuff for work. I just, it's not my favorite thing. Public speaking is yeah. not my gig. <laughs> uh, the presentations are not my, my thing either. Um, I would much rather be, like, on a panel with people 
having a discussion mm. about different things, having audience participation. Yeah. Um, and when I when I did my uh, when I did my presentations at GalaxyCon, uh, one of the like I, I talked about what I wanted to talk about, and then I immediately switched to the audience, like because I'm more of a, a an interactive person. I like mm-hmm. to communicate with other people. Yeah. Um, yeah, like yeah. I want to, I want to hear your stories. So if I'm giving you a lecture on paranormal, you don't want to just hear my stuff. You know, why don't we all share together? You know what? Right. What's going on? You know. Right. Especially if you so. say something that you've experienced that somebody in the audience is like, "Oh my god, that happened to me too." Like that's a really right. great back and forth. Yeah. 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 I'm gonna it's make fun. Laura do at one panel all by herself. Um, so she just I'm gonna shove her into the. You know, she public speaking will, genre. I did the. In, I I'm actually really not that. <laughs> I did that. <laughs> you did do Andrea Perrin's show by yourself. And then I came in and zipped it up in the last 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> stitch it up. All right. Speaking of stitching it up. All right. Yes. All right. Well, Jason, thank you so very much for being here. God, this was such a great time. Thank you for having me. Congratulations. Absolutely. Congratulations on the new book. I am super excited. I am going to go and um, pre order it on Amazon here in the next day or two. And then um, I've got a lot of flying to be doing in the next couple of weeks. So I'm definitely going to bring it with me and just blow through the whole thing on the flight. Um, So. Yeah, yeah, it's it's going to be really great. So congratulations. This is truly, truly wonderful. And again, thank you. We hope to have you back too, because I have a feeling you're going to write more books. And we would love to have you back to talk about them. So definitely. Or Sound we can just chit chat about the paranormal. I mean, sure. yeah. absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I love it. Actually, you know what, I'm gonna message you because I have an idea. So after the show, I'm okay. gonna message you. Um, <laughs> Laura's like great. <laughs> <laughs> She's the one. I might fall first. asleep, but <laughs> but I'll get back with you tomorrow. Right. All right. Well, all thanks right. so much, guys, Thank for you. tuning in. We love you all so much, and as always, stay safe out there because you never know who or what is, is listening haunting you. or haunting you. Yeah. <laughs> haunting Think about you. what's haunting you guys. <laughs> Bye. We'll see you next week. <laughs> Bye. Thanks. Thank you.